Hi, I'm Adrian Himmelheber. I'm at beautiful Red Rock Country Club in Las Vegas, Nevada, and today I have some great backhand tips for you. I like to call these the core four of the backhand in which I teach, so I want to go over a couple of those in this video. The first one will be the unit turn. Okay, so I'm right-handed, but the unit turn is the most important part to start the backhand or the forehand. So with the backhand, the unit turn is rotating as a unit, so the whole top of my body is rotating as a, as a unit. If you watch a lot of the great tennis players, the great pro tennis players, you're going to see these shoulders really turn. A lot of recreational players, I even see this with a lot of juniors, okay? The hands move back before the shoulders. I'm big on turning the shoulders and letting your arms or your hands go along for the ride. So notice it looks like I'm moving my arms, but I'm actually just turning my shoulders and my, my arms are at like a neutral point in the middle of my chest. So if you notice when I turn, it looks like my arms are moving, but it's really my shoulders. If you look from a side view, watch. As I turn, okay, my hands are neutral and they're still. This is crucial. Now, you have a lot of different types of backswing, so some are higher, some are lower, some kind of have a, a U motion, and some are just starting with the hands high. That's a style preference. We can get into that in another video, but the most important part of that core four, that first part, is the unit turn. That gets the, you know, the train going, or that, that gets things in motion, and that gets you set or prepared. Almost like if I were shooting a pistol, when I cock back, now I'm ready to pull the trigger. You don't want to do all of that in one motion. So remember, the unit turn is the first part of that core four. The second part of that core four is leverage and lining up the bottom of the racket. So just as a carpenter, okay, would nail a hammer, okay, or we would hammer a nail, excuse me, he's lining up the bottom of that hammer and lining it up with the nail. Now, I remember being a kid, my grandmother, my mom would ask me to hammer a nail into the wall and I would see her always doing it like this. What we want to do is we want to make sure we line up the bottom of that hammer to hit that nail every time. The same principle is in the backhand or the forehand. So you want to line up the bottom of the racket or the butt of the, the racket, the butt cap, and line it up with the direction of your target or where you're going to hit the ball. That's going to give me more power, more control and ultimately more leverage. So it's crucial that at some point in the swing, after the unit turn, when you're lining up to hit the ball, that you line up the bottom of that racket with the ball. Now I'm always big on keeping the hands neutral, and I always tell my students, bend and then extend. So with the unit turn, kind of to recap, the unit turn, I want to make sure that my hands are slightly bent and I'm not stiff. There's a lot of great pro tennis players out there that don't have perfect mechanics. Um, and I'm not calling out an American tennis player, but Andy Roddick, I remember seeing him with really stiff arms, okay? He did get control, but he compensated power in my opinion. Now, did he make millions of dollars on the tour? Absolutely. Did he win a Grand Slam? That's absolutely. So do you need perfect technique? Not at all, okay? But why not try to become more efficient and have a little better technique? So I'm big on the unit turn, keeping the arm slightly bent and more relaxed. You don't want to get stiff. I'm not a big fan of that. Okay. The second part is create leverage in the swing. So once I have my unit turn and I square up, okay, I want to make sure that I have leverage in the swing. Now when I create that leverage, the second part of that core uh, number two or the, or the leverage part of the bo bottom of the racket is to make sure that I'm grounded and I have a solid base. Okay. You pretty much want that all the time, but as you're accelerating through, you want to make sure that you have that solid base. So I always add the leverage with the load. So the load is my left foot because I'm right-handed, almost like a baseball player, and I'm stepping in. As I'm stepping in, that's where that leverage comes into play, and I transfer that weight appropriately in the most efficient way possible. If you enjoyed today's free lesson, please make sure that your notifications are turned on. I have a free gift for you that I want to share with you. I've worked with some of the best players and coaches in Spain, and they have a system that works. They've developed players from all skill levels. I want to share that free gift with you, so please click on the link below or somewhere on this page. Make sure your notifications are turned on, and I look forward to seeing you on the court very soon.